Hello everybody, there isn't really a whole lot to go over today, but I'll tell you what, it was exactly what you wanted to see. So as I said yesterday in my commentary, I either want to see us immediately follow through with more price gains, and or I want to see a non-threatening pullback. And by non-threatening, I mean we're not down a lot, we don't take in a lot of the previous day's gains in the indexes, and we pull back on lighter volume. We did that. We pulled. We not only did that, but we gapped down a little bit lower for a weaker open, which caused us not to close much lower from where we did open. So overall, very tight inside day, and volume was lower on the Nasdaq. Everything pretty much looks copacetic between all of the indexes and the price volume action. The S&P 500 was barely down today, 0.04%, but volume was lighter. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down 0.13%, good intraday tail. Volume was extremely light, and more importantly, the Russell 2000. I wanted to make sure that it held the majority of its gains, and as you can see, it's still basically closing in the upper half or right around the mid-range of its overall uh, day yesterday because it was up nearly 3%, down 1.1%, so definitely closing with more gains and losses. You see down 1.1%, but it held on to 1.78% of that gain. So overall, everything is pulling back orderly. It's what I want to see. This will hopefully help create more consolidation patterns out there. Unfortunately, though, for today, something that I did kind of want to see is I wanted to see maybe two or three extremely high-quality long positions trigger that didn't happen, but we did get a higher quality long position and can some quality stock that I don't want to get too excited about because it's nothing fantastic great and nothing tells me that we're definitely, you know, on our flying way higher without any problems. I just looked at the Investors Intelligence Survey today and I, I, I just cannot believe people's emotions flip so quickly. It shows us that we're a 30-second commercial society, but I think I saw bulls all the way back up to like 47%, 45%, and bears down to like 30%, 20, I, I don't know, like 29% I think I saw. But the bottom line is is that we didn't keep the bears bearish that long. They really quickly went away and became bullish, and we dropped, and the bulls are, you know, taking control in that survey again. So it's really odd to see after just a few weeks ago, us having that bull bear cross that we just only got that, I think, for two weeks. And now we're back to having the bears significantly outpace, or the bulls significantly outpace the bears. So, you know, that isn't perfect. But overall, things are looking good. So our new long position is CVRR. It is breaking out with back-to-back -back pocket pivot point signals. The pocket pivot point signal yesterday was solid. And if it would have closed the high of the day, CVRR at one point intraday was looking like a new long position. But course earnings were the next day and you can't buy those because yeah so CVRR works let's say I would have gone long I would have made a two percent gain in that but then that would have been offset by CBM's 2.5 per point five five percent loss and then would have been destroyed by ABMD's 28 percent fiasco which still would have got us out you know let's say that we do go long in the morning at 84 were then probably <laughs> immediately, well, we're taken out as soon as we get long, so that would have hit my sell stop. If something like that would have happened, which it never would have because it never would go long stock before the opening bell, but let's say you do buy it at the end of the day yesterday at 98, uh, whoops, you got it opening up at 84, so a 10% loss right out the bat. So not my cup of tea going long stocks before earnings, right before earnings. In this market, though, after the big sell-off, things that are trending up without any distribution, I'm going to go ahead and push it. That's why I've only been caught on one side of an earnings loser, and it turned out to then reverse back higher. On an end-of-day basis, it wasn't sell. Today, however, at the end of the day, it's closing below its 20-day moving average on heavier volume. So today, it is a 50% sell on the end-of-day basis. Irrelevant to me. I'm completely out. But getting back to CVRR, so it's, <coughs> excuse me, Cansom quality name. <coughs> Yeah, excuse me. Can some quality name back to back pocket pivot point signals with a convincing surge in BOP today. So very, very nice. It was almost green. In fact, I think it's just one point away from being green. So if it would have had one extra digit to whatever number that number is here, here, let's click on it. Even then, that's not going to help me. That's not going to tell me where it's at. So if it just would have been just a little bit higher, we would have had green BOP and would have had the trifecta price volume BOP that I like to see. But it didn't matter because it still made my price volume BOP scan. So not only is it a canceling stock, 2% for being a canceling quality stock, but it's in the price volume BOP scan 
add another 1% for that. And even though it's not a real technical earnings winner, earnings winners are stocks that gap up, look good, and then hold, and then could possibly run again, like Zixi and Juan, and mainly they're lower price stocks. But still, it is a post-earnings winner. And since I do like the pattern a lot, and there's not a whole lot of risk if we're wrong, on the first half of the trade, we risk less than 5%, and we risk about 6% overall on the entire last half of the trade for about 3%, basically, because since we'll be out of half of it with a 4% loss. So I'm going to go ahead and add 1% for being an earnings winner. So 2% can slim, 1% for being a technical earnings winner, even though it's not a real earnings winner like Zixi or O-N-E, and then 1% for being price volume bop scan. So that's the only long position, 4% there. The only other... Potential long position higher quality that I'm interested in is QUNR, and that would be setting buy stops above 50, 54. But I don't want to get long if it just breaks out intraday from these levels. I would like to see it go sideways two more days, keep max green bop for two days, enter my max green bop um, for five days in a row scan. Also, with this being a now perfect speculator scan quality stock under fifty dollars because being a perfect speculator stock means that you got to be over 50 but i scan for stocks that are above 40 so i can try to get them before they get into that ps scan and qunr is qualifying so potential buy stop in the future if qunr can consolidate just a couple more days sideways and then uh, before i get to our speculative long let's go over the cells because there's an important lesson ctb um, clerical sell signal barely closing below the 20 day moving average so it's a 50% sell signal on a day basis once again with that signal wait till it moves below 4117 if it hits 4116 you're out of half of it and then SMH it gapped down but I was okay with that this morning woke up and I saw that it was opening at 5406 which is below my first sell stop level because I'm willing to give the position because it's not a big, huge mover, and it won't cost me a lot, even though it's 5% of my account capital. I was going to be willing to check to see how it reacted until it went below 51.49, which means that eventually it's going to be below the 20-day moving average before it gets, hopefully, it'll still be above 51.49 by the time it gets below the 20-day moving average. So today it gapped down, thought it might be a gimme, awesome possible potential entry. And then after the first 30 minutes of trading, I put my first 50% sell level below the low a day. And I think that was like 53.79 or something like that, it feels like. Maybe I'm wrong, but it, no matter what, by the end of the day, it hit that. So I'm out of half of the SMH that I went long this morning. And the final sell stop is here, but... Whenever it does get below its 20-day moving average, that sell stop will be whatever the wick bottom. So like if that wick bottom 53.76 was below the 20-day moving average, that would then now be my final sell stop level. So SMH, CTB, T TWTR, 50% uh, sells. And then the big, big, big uh, crusher tonight, APDN. Wow, it was uh, traded all the way down to 274. Whenever I woke up, you know, there was no indication that this was going to happen to stock. And then early in the morning, you know, after my buy orders, everything was looking good in the market. And then, boom, I got hit with one sell signal, one sell on APDN, which was expected because it was below 666 because APDN was a technical 50% end-of-day sell signal yesterday with the close below 20-day moving average. So me, I moved half of my remaining stops because I already got, was out of half of it whenever it moved below these lows here at 715. So move below 715 took me out of half the stock, but I still had half the position remaining with that sell stop at 564. So I then split my remaining sell stops between 564 and 666. In the morning, the one at 665 triggered, and then shortly after the 665 triggered, the 564 triggered, and I'm like, holy shit, this thing's falling a dollar in a quick amount of time. And then by the time I go to look at it, it's in the fours, eventually going all the way down to the twos. Wow. So if you do not use end of day or if you do not use intraday sell stop levels, you are now leaving this position with a 38% loss where I left the position at the lowest of my gains would have been a 13% gain. So I left it my first sell stop approximately leave with right around 37% gain. Then I leave with a 20% gain. And now I leave with a 10% gain on my final sell stop position. But if you're holding it the whole time, instead of getting 35, 20, and 10% profits, you're getting a 38% loss. So in small stocks, guys, please, always, always, 100% of the time, 
use sell stops. And ELMD is our speculative position of the night, 1% account capital, first sell stop level below these lows, last final sell stop level below that low.